Hey everyone, so in this episode, we're going to start connecting our view admin panel to our backend and start retrieving some data and creating some products. So let's go ahead and open the admin page. And let's open the main.js file. <clears throat> so first thing we want to do is to be able to make HTTP post, we need an HTTP client. Now, Vue doesn't come with an HTTP client, and if you're wondering what an HTTP client is, it's something that can make get, post, put, delete requests, etc. If you ever use Ajax and jQuery, that's pretty much an HTTP client. So for this, we're going to be using Axios. I'm going to leave a description for this in the. I'm going to leave a link to, for this in the description. And again, we're going to be using the CDN link. So let's put it in here and actually let's put it after we import view. So now that we have Axios, let's go ahead and test it. What we want to do is we want to point it towards our controller, admin controller. And let's just get all products, right? So remember our, our route is admin slash products. So let's make a method. Get products. Let's type in axios dot get slash admin slash products. And since this is a promise based, to get the response, we need a then. And in the then, we want a la uh, an arrow function where we use this result. So let's, at the moment, let's just console log the result. Then we can do a catch. And we can say error. Console log the error. And we can do then. So even if it errors or succeeds, we can execute some code here. So let's just not submit anything. And let's create a variable called loading. And let's set it to false. And when we start getting this product, let's set loading to true. And whether it succeeds or fails, let's set this loading equals false. Let's close this off. And now in our index.chtml, let's create another, let's copy this button and let's create get products. Let's copy get products and let's put it on the on click event. Let's run this and see if it works. Okay. Let's go to the admin page. And you can see we get this data object response when we get the pro product. And this data property of the response that Axios uh, provides, here's where we get our object. So let's go ahead and display these two objects. I'm not going to touch the rest of the prices and stuff. We're going to clean that up later. But let's make a new div so we at least start a new line. And let's make a, another paragraph. And here we're going to use a for directive. So v dash for. Let's actually, we need to store our product in a variable. So let's make a products array. Okay. And now we do this products equals rest dot data. Right. Remember, because we get this object and the data property is inside the object. So we need to target the data property. Now let's go back to index chtml. Let's type in product in products. <clears throat> so it's going to create this product object for us. And this product object is going to e equal to a single item in the array of products. And then it's going to create bind this 
this product is only going to exist in the context of this p so it's good of this paragraph and it's going to create multiple paragraphs so let's go ahead and create product and let's see which product properties we have in our product so we have id we have name and we have description so we don't want to display the uh eh, might want to display the id let's go ahead and do that id product dot name and product dot description okay so let's refresh this let's get product and there you can see they appear there straight away as soon as we get them from our back end okay so now let's remove all the stuff we don't need so we don't really need this input and we don't need these show prices and in our main JS file let's also remove the price and show price keep the loading and let's remove these toggle methods and alert method and let's remove this computed property okay so now what we want to do is we want to post a product to a controller and save it so let's quickly create a product model okay and this is gonna it should be the same object as we're gonna pass to create product. So let's quickly take a look at it. And we have name, description, and value. <clears throat> so let's do just that. Name. And let's name. Let's just say product name. Description. Product description and let's do value let's do like 1.99 make sure to spell value correctly okay now let's make another div and let's create our form so let's put an input let's remove all these types and stuff like that and we're going to use the vmodel directive to bind our product model so name let's copy this three times description let's do value and let's do button and let's do create product and let's do on the click event <clears throat> let's create the method now so create product we're going to use axios.post and again we already know the route admin slash products and all we want to do is pass this product model and that's it so then we want to log uh, the result let's actually start loading here so true We'll just copy these two, put them at the bottom here, and let's console.log result. <clears throat> okay, and uh, not a dot, but slash products. Okay, so you can see it's pretty simple to set, uh, use Axios and pretty simple to use view. You just create a method, create your functionality. Moving on, let's see if it works. So I'll unclick. Then bound, so let's refresh. Okay, get products, still works. So product name, product description, and value. And let's quickly put a breakpoint in our create product as create product. Okay, we're hitting the breakpoint. Let's check our view model. And it should be empty, or yeah, so it's empty. So the reason for this, let's stop this, is we are posting JSON and if we know anything about posting json we need to use from body okay and we're going to be doing the same for the update product so let's use from body there as well okay so after we added this let's run our application again okay so admin get products create product 
let's see if it, everything's bound. So everything is. Let's just run this. F5. There we go. Let's get products again. And there we can see our new product. Okay, so there's a, a few things we can do about this actually to improve it. So you see how we had to get products again? So there's two ways we can really handle this. So first way is after we create a product, we can call get products. But this is not ideal because we're going to be making a second request. And it's going to be a second response. So what we don't want to do is return the product here after we create it and append it to the array. So let's do just that. Let's go into our create product, our product view model. And what we want to do is rename the product view model to a request. And then we want to create a response. Now let's go into our uh, get products. And whatever we get here, let's insert it into our response here. And our task wants to return type of response. Let's take this object right here. And let's create it in a product. Like so. Then we want to add it. Right? And after we save it, what Entity Framework is going to do is it's going to assign the AD to it. So it's not going to have the AD here, but after it calls save changes, the AD is going to be present. So we're going to return a new response. And in this response, we can then assign the values inside this product. So name. So let's change the VM to request because I think that's more fitting. And same here. Request. Let's run this. Let's go into our main.js and remember that the product is going to be sitting in result result.data, right? So we want to take this. <coughs> Actually, let's still log, console log it, but let's do this products. And let's push our res data on there. Okay. So let's go to the admin panel. Let's open our console and let's control F5 just in case. Product name two. Uh, and let's get all products for the sake of it. And product description two. Uh, let's up the value to 2.99. Now let's create a product. Okay. And let's F10 step through so we can see. F11 actually to step through so we can see uh, the ID being created in action. Okay, we're here. Let's take a look at the ID. And it is zero. And after we save changes, product ID is 2004. So when we assign it here, we can see it. And let's see what happens. So we get an error. Okay, so what happened here is you can see that this is a, when we get products, it's not asynchronous. Create product, however, because we're waiting to save us, saving changes to the database, it is asynchronous. Okay, so we have to make it, this an async task. Okay, and we have to await. Okay, and just in case, let's put this in curly brackets. And let's just do the same for delete and update so we don't run into this in the future. So, add another curly bracket. So at the moment, this isn't returning anything. So let's just do, let do, let's just do just that. Let's return something. Let's make this task. <clears throat> async bolt and let's return true that it has indeed deleted okay so the error goes away and let's do here the same here okay probably doesn't return anything so we want to do the same thing we want to do in the create product let's copy these two 
put it in here instead of the product view model. Take request, put it here. Actually, yep, we'll have to change it in our controller as well. There we go. Rename this to request. Rename this to request as well. And let's just return new response for now. And let's make it task of response. Okay. So let's test this to make sure this works. <clears throat> okay, so let's get all products. We're going to end up with a lot of products by the end of this. So yeah, 3.99. Let's open our console. Let's create. And there we go. Automatically adds it to the list. Good stuff. But yeah, this will be it for this episode. If you enjoyed the series, like, subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. I'll try to answer them all. And as always, see you in the next episode.